without bees would struggle to sustain the global population of 7 billion. Bees pollinate 70 of the around 100 crop species that feed 90% of the world. We may lose all the plants that bees pollinate and all the animals that eat those plants. As far as important species go, bees are top of the list. Honeybee population is declining at an alarming rate. Four million bees died overnight. Fifty million bees died Half a million bees overnight. Bees 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 to a carpet of dead bees. 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 Turn, Turn this trend around. around. Listen. Do you hear the bus? This is the bus from the most important living being on the planet, according to Earthwatch Institute in 2019. This declaration is very concerning because bees are on the endangered species list, according to wildlife scientists and experts. So, what can we do to help? My name is Michael. I'm a senior digitalization advisor at Business and Technology Consulting but I'm also a beekeeper. I have several beehives that I own and care for. And I'm also the secretary of a local beekeeping association. My father was a beekeeper, as well as my grandfather and my mother-in-law. So it is something that has been in the family for many years now. I've had bees for more than 20 years, but been around bees and beekeeping my entire life. Welcome to Kalmar and uh, Teatro Evry. Uh, my name is Mikael Ekström and I work as a digitalization advisor, but I'm also a beekeeper in my spare time. And I have had the fortune to actually uh, participate in a project where we have developed a digital beehive. So let's take a look inside. Inside of this beehive, we have uh, the digital equipment which is a digital gateway. Uh, in this gateway that has been uh, created uh, based upon a Raspberry Pi, uh, one chip computer. We have then connected a set of different types of sensors into this uh, gateway. So for example, we have a temperature sensors, or actually we have a couple of temperature sensors uh, so that we can measure the temperature both inside where the bees are but also uh, inside of the hive itself not ex act actually where the bees are but uh, in the hive we also have other sensors like uh, one sensor that measure the uh, uh, the temperature and the humidity and also the uh, pressure the air pressure uh, we also have another one here uh, which is a sensor for sound so uh, we have a couple of uh, students that are now working on their thesis to actually, uh, with the sound sensors, detect different types of uh, um, activities within the hive. The sensors give me data like the weight of the frames, the temperature and the humidity in the hive. For example, they can let me know when I need to add more frames because the current frames are full of honey. I'm not saying that sensors solve the mystery of bees, but it helps us to understand them a whole lot better. Winter is the most difficult time of the year for beekeepers. If I can monitor the weight, I'll know that they have enough food. And if I can see that there is a stable temperature in the hive during the winter, I know that the colony is in good condition. The more I can avoid disturbing the hive, 
the better it is. And I can still get enough data when and how I should help them. So uh, right now, because it's winter, it's becoming uh, summer soon, um, this uh, bee society lives inside of the hive on about 10 frames. And they have been doing so since uh, uh, September, October last year. So uh, in this hive, we got the frames under these uh, wood uh, panels. Um, Today it is a little bit too windy and too cold here in Sweden, so uh, I have decided not to open up and show you the frames with the bees uh, inside them. Uh, it's a little bit, unfortunately, a little bit too cold yet. Uh, the spring has not really arrived, um, and um, we hope soon that we will be able to uh, start working with the bees. So what we do is that we have this gateway inside of the hive here on the side and then we take these sensors and we place the sensors on uh, among the frames that are inside of the hive. The great thing with uh, Digital Beehive and, and this uh, sort of construction that we have done is that you have the possibility of using different types of sensors, digital sensors for different things that you want to measure. For example, this one as it is a combined sensor that measures both the temperature, the humidity and the air pressure. While these two sensors are dedicated to temperature and this one is actually a sound sensor. And there is a possibility of actually adding into the gateway different kind of sensors that you would like to have in the future. So it gives us a, a great flexibility of, of expanding the solution, the digital uh, beehive uh, solution in, in a very interesting way. For example, we could perhaps measure the air quality, we could look for air pollution and uh, other type of uh, things that we want to measure. Let's look inside of the gateway so uh, we can see how it looks like. So uh, this is the connection for power and uh, network communication. It's using something called power over ethernet. Uh, and then we have the computer itself, which is a Raspberry Pi computer. And then you can see how the different types of sensors has been connected into the computer. And then we have software on the computer here who detects the different types of data and sends it to the cloud service. Let's close this now and uh, put it back so we can uh, have control of our beehive. So uh, in this hive, uh, I've actually placed some extra duvet uh, to keep some extra warmth uh, above sort of uh, the bee society that are in here. This is to make sure that the bee queen, who has maybe during the spring started to lay some eggs in here, that she get a, a very uh, good and comfortable temperature. So that's why I put some extra duvet on, on top of this to make, make them a little bit more cozy and uh, so that they feel good. Okay. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration of the digital beehive and this uh, type of hive called Sm Smålandskupa. So let's close and um, hopefully um, this will be a strong and active bee society during the summer. Uh, today there is uh, much better weather, so we are going to open up the hive uh, and take a look at the bees and see if we can find a queen. And I'm also going to add some frames into the hive um, and look so that they have enough food after the winter. So here we have the hive, the beehive. And... Um, as you can see, there is a lot more activity today. Um, the spring has come and um, you can see that there's quite a lot of bees coming here with pollen on their back 
uh, legs. So, let's see if we can find any bees in here. I really love these small, hard-working and fluffy insects. They are very clever, communicate with each other in the most amazing yes. way by dancing in specific patterns. Yeah, they are. And they have a society where they help each other in several different roles. Let's take a look. Let's see. And uh, there's also food. They have plenty of, uh, of food, so I don't think I need to give them anything more, actually. A quick visit. And clean up a little bit. Here are some bees who are bringing in pollen. You can see the, the yellow big uh, lumps on, on their back. Here's the queen. You can see here, she is green from last year. And you can also see that she has laid new eggs and uh, they have covered it with some wax on top of them. So she looks very, very nice. Many of you probably know that the most important bee in the colony is the bee queen. But do you also know that most of the decisions in the hive are made in a joint collective manner? Like making a joint decision to feed one or more specific cells with more vitamins and enzymes so that a new queen is raised. And if she is instated, the old one will leave the hive. In other words, a swarm is created and you will have two bee colonies to take care of. Let's close it up and uh, then we will expand uh, the bee society when it's getting warmer and uh, more close to the, to the spring and warmer weather and summer. Now they can start expanding and building on their society. Um, and for the season, for the next, for the summer season. This is the sound sensor that I'm going to put inside of the hive. And this is the temperature and the humidity and the air pressure so uh, sensor. So I'm going to have these two lying inside uh, among the, the frames. Oops. And then I'm going to push, put the duvet on top of it again. So that we help them to keep a little bit extra warmth. Now we have made the spring ex uh, inspection and uh, made some cleaning and uh, checked out that they had enough food and uh, that um, the society looks good. And now we put some of the sensors back as well, so we can keep a, care, a careful control of, of the bee society. The attention of the project has been incredible so far. There have been articles written about the project in several newspapers and magazines, like an international article by Bloomberg. The Swedish Embassy in the US tweeted about the project and we have also been interviewed by Swedish radio and television news channel. One of our proudest moments were, however, when we got nominated to the CIO awards in the category for this year's environmental project in 2020. And we actually won. So let's close up. Well, the idea of invention is at its best, a small change can make a huge difference. This year's environmental project shows that digitalization really can be used to create a better future. Collecting data and transforming it into new knowledge about small creatures in the ecosystem can make all the difference for our planet. Here are some concrete examples of how you can help bees, even if you are not able to have your own hive. First thing is to grow plants, trees and flowers that bees like and can collect nectar and pollen from. Bees really like wildflowers, so letting these grow will help the bees. For wild bees, 
you can put up small bee nests where they can find good living conditions. You can make these using instructions online or buy them in local stores. You can also become a supporting member of your local beekeeping association. The most important thing is to resist using pesticides in your garden. Let us all do our part in the preservation of insects and bees.